It is now Felipe Coutinho from outside the box. That is a phenomenal finish to open the scoring. Felipe Coutinho. You guys have constantly told me that we need to get the best out of the Brazilian maestro. What a pass that is for Antoine Griezmann who's broken through you has to score. Antoine Griezmann with a classy finish. So here we are back again another episode of the Barcelona career mode series over on FIFA 21. This is episode number 9. Oh and it should be a really big episode today because we should be in the transfer window and as you know we've sold Sergio Roberto to Manchester City which means we're on the hunt for a replacement right back. And I think we're going to be making that signing in today's episode. And also we find ourselves competing in the Spanish Super Cup. You guys know they've changed the format of this competition. And we're playing Athletic Bilbao in the semi-finals. Real Madrid face Real Sociedad. Should be a fun competition. Maybe we're going to be getting our first trophy of this series in today's episode. So yeah, we've got a lot to look forward to in today's episode. Potentially some new signings. The Spanish Super Cup, our first trophy, is definitely on the cards. And if you guys are enjoying this Barcelona career mode, drop a like on the video. 5,000 likes and I'll get you an episode tomorrow. Subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get this one underway. So it's now time for a press conference. And if you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comment section below first one of the day why don't you put one of your fullbacks and stay back while attacking to accommodate for the lack of defense when teams counter-attack just like what 10-11 Barca did with Abidal as Alves would go really high up while Abidal stayed back now I think the reason Barca did that was because they knew how effective Dani Alves was I mean in my opinion he was the best right back of all time and yeah to have Dani Alves given that extra freedom was influential for Barcelona and that's why Abidal was sacrificed in a way but with us I don't think Jordi Alba is that influential as Dani Alves so I've got him on balanced and overlap so he still has to defend and the same with Sergio Roberto and that's why I'm not too keen on having like one fullback stay back and heavily influencing just one side of the attack I'm happy to have a balanced approach with our fullbacks especially with the new right back coming in who I am going to sign in this window with Roberto leaving and I'm going to be signing an aggressive attacking right back so yeah we I think need to have a balanced approach I don't want to be focusing on one flank more than the other so nope I'm not going to have one fullback stay back while attacking we're going to be going attacking through both uh, wings that's the plan next up of all the right backs you've got on your short list which one you want to bring in the most i'm not gonna lie it's artema traude now i know i've signed him before on fifa 20 in a fair few career modes but just the thought of bringing him back to barcelona converting his position with a new feature on fifa 21 it's it's just so inviting now a lot of people were telling me it's going to take a lot of time to convert his position but what we can do is convert him first to a right wing back and from a right wing back to a right back shouldn't take much time since he does have that right wing back position on him. I don't think it's going to take that much time to convert his position and it should be fun to test this out. And that's kind of why I want to sign Adama Traore and I'm going to give it everything to bring this man to Barcelona. It's going to be an expensive signing because we know he's got good potential. He's still fairly young being only 24 so... Yeah, let's bring this beast home. Next up, renew Frankie de Jong's contract as he's got a release clause of 200 million. Well, in my save, he's got himself a 172 million release clause. In my career mode save, Man City paid 200 million for him in the January window because his rating goes up to 89 by then. Wow. We do not want Frankie de Jong leaving the club at any point, so... I am definitely going to remove that release clause on him. He's one of the players that's going to stay throughout the series. There's no way the Dutchman leaves. So in today's episode, we're giving him that new contract. With that press conference done, let's move on. Not going to lie, it was a pretty difficult one to decide for player of the episode because I thought Leo Messi was fantastic in the last one. But the standards for Messi are so high that unless he scores like a hat trick, it's difficult to give him like the player of the episode award at this point because he's that good, guys. He is legit that good. So I decided to give the player of the episode of water Jules Conde superb against Atafe a clean sheet in the last episode and clean sheets are really difficult to come by on FIFA 21 so the youngster former Sevilla player picks up his very first player of the episode award of this series so guys we're still a few days away from the transfer window we actually have a game before we can get into making signings and all as we take on Valadoli who are 11th in La Liga right now and we're cruising in first place. Three points above Atletico, four points above Real Madrid. We are going to simulate this game against Valladolid so we can quickly 
get to the transfer window and start getting business done. We simulate this one against Real Valladolid and we dominate the game really well. A 2-0 win for us with Leo Messi and Usman Dembele on target. We kept over 70% possession in this one, 3 points secured. I'm honestly not surprised that Memphis Depay has come in with a message like this. I need more games, Gaffer. Not playing isn't good enough for where I am in my career. And he's perfectly right to come in with a message like this because he's that good right now. I do use Griezmann more often than him. That might need to change because Memphis Depay is getting upset and I think he's been in better form lately. I'm just going to say I rely on you when it matters the most to at least keep that morale up. But the battle between Depay and Griezmann for that starting spot is going to get heated soon. So I guess now we're basically at the halfway point of La Liga and we're actually unbeaten in the league which is amazing. A three-point advantage over Atleti and Real Madrid is awesome. Now we can of course focus on transfer business for a while while we also have the Spanish Super Cup to take care of. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering when am I going to reveal the team we'll be up against in the Champions League round of 16. Well, I'm going to make you guys wait for that because we don't have the Champions League in January. We'll focus only on the transfer window and the games we've got then. So the reveal for the round of 16 will be in February before we actually play the game. So you guys are going to have to wait a bit to find out who we'll be up against in this competition. Okay, the transfer window has opened and it's now time for us to get business underway. Have a look at this. Braithwaite has been sold to Lazio. Sergio Roberto has been sold to Manchester City. Sam Willem Titi has been sold to Inter Milan. And now we've got a final scout report on Adam Traore. 80 rated right now, which means I think we can snag him for like a cheap price. We'll see though. Look at those space stats and the strength and all. We've got to give him like defensive training. And I'm sure he'll be absolutely ridiculous for us in this series. I want to bring him guys. Absolutely I want to bring him. I know Max Adams is a good choice. I know Emerson is a more realistic choice. But come on. Let's bring back Adama Traore to Barcelona. Because of all the players we sold, we're up on a budget of about 190 million, which is just bonkers, like honestly. And our wage budget is about a million. Barcelona and real life going through a financial crisis, but we in this series have a ton of money to spend. And that gets me thinking, what kind of signings do you guys want to see in this window? Definitely signing Adama Traore, but I'm also thinking we could improve that centre-back spot if an offer comes in for Gerard Piquet because I am definitely inclined to sell him in the big games like that one against Juventus in the last episode he just doesn't perform the lack of pace is just crazy if an offer comes in for Alba I'm definitely open to replacing him but apart from that I'm actually pretty happy with my team so let me know in the comments section what kind of transfers you want to see in the January window I don't want to be making more than two or maximum three transfers because it's super unrealistic to bring in a lot of players in this window for now though guys let's get the big deal done Adama Traore to Barcelona let's make it happen so 35 million is what I'm going to start with and we'll see if Wolves are willing to negotiate I'm pretty sure that's a similar amount to what they paid for Nelson Smedo if they're willing to accept that they want Ansu Fati. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Wolves want Ansu Fati. Na 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 No freaking way is that ever gonna happen. We'll give you, um... We'll give you 40 million. But Ansu Fati, in no stretch of imagination, will be joining Wolves. I do know that Ansu's agent is Jorge Mendes, so this is kind of realistic for them to demand this, but... No way in hell I'm offering Ansu Fati to Wolves. He's going to be in this series for the longest possible time. 40 million, they won 48. Our negotiations on this game is really hard, man. Especially the valuation. I've countered with 45 just to see if Wolves are willing to accept that. And they are. With that, we've negotiated a 45 million deal for Adama Traore's return to Barcelona. We're going to give Adama Traore a rotation squad role. That should work. And that means Serginho Dest will be getting more game time and Adama won't be angry about it he does accept the rotation squad role let's continue i'm gonna give him a five-year deal hopefully he accepts a five-year deal wait a minute he wants a two-year deal i'm gonna counter that with four come on accept a four-year deal a two-year deal come on adama what are you kidding me let let's go with a three-year deal then he's willing to accept it i'm confused why he doesn't want a five-year deal at barcelona we'll remove the release clause these are his demands. Pretty acceptable, I'm not gonna lie. Let's remove the extra bonus. We've got a 92,000 wage on him and an 860,000 signing bonus. He wants a bit of extra cash. We'll work with that. And there you go, for 94,000 per week, we've just signed Adama Traore 
back to Barcelona. Let's go. He's back at the club. Okay, now this is where things get interesting for us. Can we train Adama Traore back into a right back? And how long is that going to take? Oh my god, I think we've messed up. I think we've absolutely messed up, guys. It says it's going to take 229 weeks to train Adama Traore to a right back. Wow. We have absolutely messed up, guys. This is not good at all. Wow, I'll put him on a training plan for, of course, a right back. It's going to take 429 weeks. I doubt this series is going to run that long. Oh my god, for now we'll train him to a right mid and see how long it'll take to slowly move down to, of course, a right wing back or a right back. But this transfer, now I'm not too sure about. I think we've really messed up, guys. I think we've really messed up. Okay, guys, I really think I've messed up this Adam Traore signing because he loses 20 ratings if I put him in that right back position. I thought it was going to be simple to train him down to that position because he's played there before, but my god, is it not possible to do that? And we're now in a bit of a problem. We've signed Adama as a right winger in a position we don't really need to strengthen. We've already got so many players there. In, of course, Trincao, Usman Tembele. I don't know what to do now. I'm super confused. Guys, help me out here. I think we've made our first big blunder in terms of signings in this series. And the worst thing is, we still need to sign a right back because Serginio Des can't be our only right back for the season. Wow, we've really made a big blunder, haven't we? I guess we're straight away going to try and sign another right back. Serginio Des cannot be our only right back for the rest of the season. And I wanted to do something different. Emerson is a player I've used in my Barca career modes before. And the same with Cancelo and all. So you know what? Why not try out Max Ahrens? I know he's low rated, but there were big rumours linking him to Barcelona. And there was a lot of interest. In fact, even Bayern Munich want to sign Max Ahrens. So this kid has got the potential. We made a big blunder with Adam Traore. Let's, you know, try and of course make up some ground by signing Max Ahrens. So I'm going to offer 10 million to start things off with with Norwich. Let's see if they're willing to negotiate. 18% sell-on clause and they're accepting a 10 million fee. That's that's not bad at all. I don't really plan on selling Max Ahrens, at least for a few seasons. So yeah, 10 million works for me. So these are Max Ahrens' demands. His sporadic squad role works perfectly fine for me. In fact, he won't be cribbing about his lack of game time. We're offering him these wages as well, about 30,000 per week. And with that, we've now signed an actual right back that won't drop in ratings when we play him in that position. So there you go. That's a done deal. This mistake that we've made with Adama Traore just clearly shows how much better career mode is this year. Because in real life, failed transfers do happen. Clubs do sign players that they don't actually need, that they don't end up using. And in career mode previously before, this kind of stuff never happened. And now with, of course, all the new depth and new features... We've made a big blunder here with Adama Traore, so it's kind of realistic for this to happen at least once in this series. But hopefully this won't happen again because it's super frustrating. I was so disappointed seeing Adama drop all those ratings and take so long to be trained into a new position. But it is what it is. In today's episode, we're not going to be making any more signings. Let me know in the comments section where else should we try and improve our team because we have the budget. That's for sure. And I'm definitely thinking about improving the defense. So we'll see. Let me know in the comment section. Okay, now an offer coming in from Spurs for Leo Messi. 137.4 million. Get out of here. We're rejecting this offer straight away. Messi ain't going anywhere. But an offer coming in for PK. His value continues to drop. We had a 40 million offer for him in the summer transfer window, which we rejected. And now he's worth only about 30. But 33-year-old PK, I'm not happy with him. I'm willing to let him go, guys. Honestly, similar to what happened with Godin, he left Atletico for Inter. I'm going to accept this offer for PK. We'll see if this deal goes through. I'm really hoping we can end off PK's career at Barcelona with a Spanish Super Cup win. The transfer window so far has been chaotic for us with like the signing of Adama, Max Arens, and of course the potential sale of PK. But for now, we're going to have to focus on the semi-finals of the Spanish Super Cup. I want to win this trophy. I want to get our first trophy of the series as soon as possible. Let's knock out Bilbao. I know I've called Adama already a failed signing, but you know what? On that right side, he could offer something that nobody else offers in this team. And that's why I want to try him out here against Athletic Bilbao, give him his debut, ease him into the squad through a Spanish Super Cup game. Around him, we've got Depay and Ansu Fati starting Messi in cam. 
That's, I think, his best position on this game. Pjanic, De Jong, a strong backline with Serginho Dest playing again in another big game. That's how he's going to improve. That's our team against Bilbao. Let's knock them out. Here we go. Spanish Super Cup has kicked off as we take on Athletic Bilbao. I'm not sure in real life if the Spanish Super Cup is going to be held in the same format. Last year, I think it was held in Saudi Arabia. Real Madrid did end up winning that competition. So, yeah, let me know in the comment section if the Super Copa is going to be held in the same way. Because I'm not sure. Problems here for us. Oh, I've messed up that. And they're going to probably have a chance here with Muniain. There's the drag back. Jordi Albas goes sliding in but can't put the challenge in properly. The pressure is building up from Athletic Bilbao. They're a difficult team. If I remember earlier on in the season, we did draw against them in La Liga. So, you never know. First involvement in the game from Adama. Let's see what he's all about. Can he get in behind their defense? Of course he can. Here goes Adama now. The pace is there, but oh, he's not quicker than this Leke guy. Come on, Adama needs to be doing better there. Adama on the ball, looking for Miralem Pjanic. Now Messi, Memphis. Out wide for Adama Traore, who's gotten in behind the defense. Does brilliantly, could lay this one off for Messi. The ball is decent, but the block from Yerai was fantastic. Adama getting in behind has brought in a different dimension to our right flank. Certainly a different option, so I guess all round, it might prove to be a really good signing, especially in certain games where we need that kind of an outlet. Uh-oh, Bilbao have gotten in behind with Ibai Gomez. Good defending from PK. This could be one of his last games in a Barca shirt. Because the Inter Milan move is on the cards. So I'm hoping he can have a good game as we might be able to send Memphis Depay through here. 1v1 against the Bilbao keeper. Tries the cheeky chip and pulls it off to perfection. You guys know I love my chip shots. And well, we've just scored a fantastic one against Athletic Bilbao. Taking the lead in this Spanish Super Cup semi-final. Adama celebrates with the team as well. But it was all about Miralem Pjanic and that pass to Depay. And then the finish was just outstanding as Barcelona get themselves an early lead in this Super Cup tie. We're not getting knocked out here. I'm going to win this Super Cup. So we're going for it, guys. I am really not sure how the Super Cup works in terms of the rules. Like, are we going to go to penalties if the game ends in a draw? I think not. I think there's going to be extra time. I don't want to be going through extra time and whatnot. So let's get this game wrapped up in 90. Messi. Lovely pass for Depay. I'm not sure if he's onside or not. He is offside, but the finish was absolutely brilliant. Depay is in the mood. I'm telling you, man. Memphis is different gravy. Wait, wait, wait. The lines have been drawn wrong. Memphis Depay was onside there, guys. Or am I seeing things? Have we just been robbed by VAR? What on earth was that? I'm confused, guys. I'm confused. There goes Messi on a run. Linking up with Depay, the return pass is wonderful for Leo Messi. Messi now on the volley, that is absolutely brilliant from Barcelona. Leo Messi with a ridiculous finish and Barcelona lead tune. And he's going to do the classic head slap celebration that he does so often in real life. The link up play between him and Depay was just unreal. Have a look at that again, the pass, the 1-2 and then of course the release. Messi on the half volley as well, slammed it home, beating the Bilbao keeper and we do get our two goal cushion. Barcelona in cruise control, we're almost there in the Spanish Super Cup final. Now as controversial as this might be, I'm bringing off Leo Messi, I think the result is secured. And I want Messi fully fit, 100% fit for the game against Real Madrid potentially. I know if we end up getting knocked out here by subbing on Coutinho or something, I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life, but I'm making a big play. I'm also going to bring on Trincao for Arma Traore. And let's bring on Busquets for Pjanic to give us the defensive stability. Lovely stuff from Ansu Fati. Could go for a cross for Memphis. Memphis has to score this. It's beautiful football from Barcelona. Ansu Fati grabbing an assist. And with that, Athletic Bilbao have basically been knocked out of the Spanish Super Cup. This is the kind of performance... I've been waiting to deliver in this series for a long time because, let's be real, against the big teams this season, we've been awful. We've lost to Juventus, we've drawn against Bilbao, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, and it's it's been chaos. And finally, we're putting in a convincing performance against one of the bigger teams in La Liga. It's really satisfying to get this done. Let's now see this game out and move on to the finals. Full time against Bilbao, it's job well done for Barcelona. We're through to the finals where we'll be up against Real Madrid. Love to see a convincing performance like this. And it's happened. Gerard Pique has been sold to Inter Milan. It's kind of emotional, you know. Pique has been so, so good for Barcelona for so long. But 
Honestly, on FIFA, he just isn't usable and I think it's time to say goodbye. You could make a good argument even in real life, it's time for Barcelona to find a proper replacement in this series. I think it's time we do exactly that. PK has been sold for 31 million to Inter Milan and it's now time for us to hunt for a new centre-back in this window. Well, 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 look what we have here. Jules Conde has just dropped me a DM as soon as PK has been sold. I think he senses that he's got an opportunity and well... In this final, Jules Conde is going to start with Longley. Let's hope he has a good game. Now, of course, we will discuss a few options about that centre-back position because it's really important having another world-class defender and we're definitely going to make that signing in this window. But first, Spanish Super Cup final, a chance to win a trophy in this series. Let's get it done. Let's beat Real Madrid. It's a Clasico and it's going to be epic. Now, I have definitely made some really interesting changes for my lineup in this one. Dembele is back in the side. I've got Trincao starting on that right flank. I feel like he deserves an opportunity. I really enjoyed him in the brief period I used him in that last game. Messi sticks to Cam. Memphis Depay, how can I leave him out? He's been unbelievable so far in this episode. I mean, superb against Bilbao. So he has to start. Jules Conde starting ahead of Pique. I would have loved to see Pique stay at the club. For this game against Madrid but the deal just went through before and it's a shame PK can't end his Barcelona career with a classico but anyways this is our team Barcelona Real Madrid let's take a look at their team that's the Real Madrid team we're up against and it looks class I mean Asensio Benzema Hazard Odegaard starts for them Luka Modric Casemiro Cruz misses out a strong defense with no Sergio Ramos in a game like this, no Ramos. In fact, we don't have both Ramos and PK in this final. That is just absurd. That's the Madrid team we're up against. Let's get the job done. Okay, why is this final being played in the Bernabeu? Isn't that unfair? But to be fair, Barcelona do have a good record of embarrassing Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. So, I'll absolutely take that. Let's, let's get the job done here. It's a big night for Jules Conde. I mean, he's starting in a Clasico, replacing Gerard PK. Let's hope he can have a big performance here, but the pressure could get to him. Let's hope that's not the case. Otrinkao wins that. Looks for a cross. Memphis controls it well. Can he shoot though? Big save from Courtois. It falls to Leo Messi though. Flicks it up once. Goes for goal. Big block from Militao as we try to get the lead in this game. But a couple of blocked shots right there from Real Madrid. Courtois made a big save off Depay's shot, but we're looking in the mood for this one. Looks for Miralem Pjanic. It's nice. Back now to Memphis, Depay who's broken through here, could lay this one off for Leo Messi, what's Messi done, he slipped, Leo Messi literally slipped there, the ball was behind Messi of course, but a golden opportunity for us to take the lead in this Clasico and we've squandered it, oh my god, that should have been 1-0 in this final, Martin Erdegaard, now Modric, Benzema back to Modric here, Jules Conde takes it. Here's Jules Conde making a good run forward and what a pass that is for Trincao. Here he goes, he, he tries to flick the ball that was trying to like push the ball forward but Trincao is still on it. Looks for Depay who flicks it up, it works in a way but couldn't get the shot off. I'm trying to be cheeky way too much. I've got to tone it down a bit but did you guys see how good Jules Conde's through ball was? He's something special. Now it's Usman Dembele, big opportunity for Dembele, shoots and scores. Usman Dembele on the left flank is finally delivering. It's Dembele who opens the deadlock for us in the Clasico as Barcelona get the advantage. Leo Messi, provider, Dembele, the finisher. He's been pretty woeful for me down the left flank, but in this game, he's taken advantage of the open space and that's a cracking finish off that left foot of his as Barcelona take the lead against Real Madrid, a classical Spanish Super Cup final as Barcelona have the advantage. Benzema on the attack now. Still Benzema, I have not closed him down at all. Luka Modric though with space. Still Luka Modric, it's absolutely brilliant from Luka, the former Ballon d'Or winner as his shot comes cracking off the post. Wow, we got lucky with that one. It could have easily been 1-1 at halftime, but we survive. Luka Modric does not score as Barcelona take the lead in the second half. Whew, that was a crucial moment in this game. Second half, let's push for more. I think we've got a trophy here that we can absolutely win. Here's Benzema now. Longley, what a challenge there to win the ball. I tell you what, we needed someone to hold the fort in the absence of Gerard Piquet with his departure now. 
Long Lay has had a phenomenal game. I'm kind of feeling a bit Ansu Fati in this one, so we're going to bring him on on that left side. This hasn't really been Depay's game, so we'll bring on Griezmann, as well as Riki Puic for Mirilim Pjanic. The game has been so tight against Real Madrid, with just one goal separating the two teams. The fact that they also hit the post in that first half has definitely got me worried. I'm sure they've got one chance left in them. And if they do score that, we're going to be in trouble, which is something I absolutely do not want. We've got to defend like our lives depend on it. Releasing this one for Ansu Fati. It's a lovely pass for him. Can Ansu Fati score against Real Madrid? Ansu can't. Griezmann on the rebound can't as well. The run with the block. That should have been 2-0. Game, final, match set, done, whatever you want to call it. That should have been the trophy in the bag instead. We're now seeing a counter-attacking opportunity from Madrid, but they've decided to slow the game down. Or have they not? Asensio, Modric, Casemiro looks inside for Tony Cruz. A bicycle kick from him. And that could have easily been 1-1. How have Real Madrid not scored in this one? This has been an unbelievable final. I know the scoreline 1-0 kind of seems boring, but that's not been the case at all in this one. They almost just scored a wonder goal as we have a chance now on the break. Ansu looking for Messi, controls it well, the volley is saved. Oh, what do we need to do to score? And there you have it guys, full time we've managed to win our first trophy of the series. It is a pointless trophy, I'm not gonna lie, nobody really cares about the Spanish Super Cup. But it's a trophy on board and it's a nice way to start off or continue our season because now the Spanish Super Cup is played mid-season which is certainly weird but it's going to be Captain Leo Messi's first trophy in this series which I'm really hyped for. Although I said this is a pointless trophy, beating Real Madrid in it is still really really satisfying. Time to see Messi lift a trophy in this series for the very first time. We've just won the Spanish Super Cup. Let's go. So there you have it. We've added our first trophy to the collection and it's the Spanish Super Cup. I'm hopeful it'll be the first of many. Okay, so now that we've wrapped up the Spanish Super Cup, our first trophy is in the bag. And it's now time for us to discuss the replacement of PK. We've sold him. We need to sign someone else. Let me know in the comments section who should we bring in to replace PK. Delict is an option. An expensive one, but he is an option. I'm going to consider him. I want to go for a world-class centre-back, guys. I'm not messing about. Before we wrap up the episode, a quick plate of the episode award discussion. I think this time around, it's going to be a three-way battle between Depay, Dembele and Longley. I thought the three of them were fantastic in this episode. So make sure to make your vote count in the comments section by letting me know who should win the award. But with that, guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's episode. Spanish Super Cup secured. We kind of messed him out with some transfers, but we still signed Max Arins and Adama Traore. I don't know where we're going to use Adama, what we're going to do with him. So it's going to be a struggle figuring things out. Next episode, centre-back is on the agenda. La Liga resumes. A lot's going to happen. If you're enjoying the series, drop a like on the video. 5,000 likes for an episode tomorrow. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you all next time.